Now this is the second of the incredible large platters that we use for our demonstration video on how to identify and date willow ironstone or pearlware <laughs> this meat platter. Absolutely gorgeous great big thing made by Thomas Fell in Newcastle at the St Peter's Pottery. Date range for this piece is between 1869 and 1890. It's in its original wire rack. An absolutely incredibly heavy piece of ironstone this. Absolutely massive. All the measurements and dimensions are going to be on the website listing so we'll pop those in the description below so you can link through. Some of the key features on this one that uh, make it outstanding. The bird design with these characteristic curved back tail feathers and the wing design. This secondary infill blocker tree behind the, the trees that are coming out of the, the moss islands on the design. Again, quite characteristic, as is the little shape in the pagoda temple here and the boat design. We used many of the elements in this to, to demonstrate the unique features of what most people just pass over without noticing the variations in the design used in the block works for these. And also, you know, we didn't even start to cover the difference in the, the block designs used around the rims for these. Again, they vary considerably from factory to factory. This piece weighs an absolute, it really is a two arm lift. And here we have the rear of it. Let's just show you that. Impress crown mark. Now usually fell would have a, a stamp on it, but not all the pieces do. They're notoriously bad at sort of reliably putting things on the underside of their china. Um, they usually have an anchor mark and uh, they'll have an F and Co, Fell and Company stamp as well. This has got none of those. The only clue to the manufacturer is that crown stamp mark. But there are only two factories that at this era were producing one ironstone of this type and only one of them was using the crown. So that really narrows it down so that we can be pretty certain that this is the, the work of uh, Fells. It does have lovely pattern of wear on the underside, as you can see, absolutely right for its age. And this, remember, is 1869 through to the very earliest 1890. Little bit of, uh, you know, just the grit coming through the, the glaze here. One condition note on this platter, there is a small, old, antique, chip here that just uh, it's had a knock at some time and there's a little chip just extending round on a curve that's stable it's not going to uh, expand and it can be cleaned up nicely it doesn't show from the front if I turn it over I'll show you that and it's still in its original antique wire wrap which is absolutely wonderful there we go there's the front and there's no sign of that crack along the front to make any visual impact on what you're going to be looking at day in day out for hopefully a lifetime this beautiful beautiful interpretation of the blue willow design and the glaze on the front is just that's why they call it pearl where it's got that lustrous glow this depth the blue background glaze color just picking up somebody's thumb mark here where they've smudged it in moving it into the kiln these will usually have kiln support marks on them, but this one hasn't got any visible signs of that. The one we listed earlier, a baker uh, piece from the Yorkshire Potteries, had three very distinct kiln support marks where they formed a little tripod out of clay and that had just uh, removed the glaze, but this one's very, very clean. Different technique used, obviously, by uh, Thomas Fell in Newcastle. A superb and rare piece of china. Value is slightly reduced by that little bit of damage. If it was perfect, then you would be looking at between four and five hundred pounds. This one is going to be less than that because it has got that uh, little crack. But I would not, as a collector, be too concerned about that. These are hard to find in this size. They're very, very hard to find. And to have this surface in such bright and good condition for display. We're gonna sell it with the antique wire rack on. It's a wall hanging rack, uh, probably put on sometime during the early 20th century, uh, maybe even earlier. It's got quite a bit of uh, uh, pattern on the actual steel wires that have been used. Um, 
We've checked under and around the rims because, you know, as a dealer, we always are concerned when we have pieces that come in wire racks that they're going to be worn or nipped underneath where the wire's worn away over the years. But these have been checked and it's absolutely clean. It's, it's fine. There's no wear or damage around that wire. So if you'd like to find out more information about this extremely wear and wonderful, superb large piece of uh, iron, stone, pearl wear or transfer wear as the Americans uh, like to call this. Follow the description link below. It'll take you through to the Vintage and Antiques website where this little beauty is going on sale later on today. Thanks for watching. Oh, and by the way, we will put a link in also to uh, the video we made showing three uh, platters and how you can use some of the clues and the difference in the design on these things to identify both the date range and the manufacturer. Thanks for watching.